Today we're taking a look at the new GarageBand and the new iMovie just released with OS X Mavericks on iPad 365. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here and welcome to iPad 365, the show where we look at apps to keep your iPad a play. We got some new versions of GarageBand and iMovie. I'm going to show them to you in a minute here. And then, of course, we're going to talk about um, Mavericks and, of course, all the new cool stuff coming out from Apple, including that fifth-generation iPad called iPad Air. First of all, I want to let you know, iPad365 is the Twitter handle. You can go there and check it out. Of course, show at iPad-365.com is the email address if you've got an app that you want me to want to show me and show off to everybody else. Apple came out with some new programs. They've updated their iWork, their iLife programs. We got new Keynote. We've got a new GarageBand. We got a new iMovie. We've got uh, we've, we've got six new programs that, of course, we'll talk about as we go here in the next couple weeks. So I'm going to start off with the two programs I've talked about, two programs that I'm very familiar with, GarageBand and iMovie. And, of course, we talked about them before. Now with the updates, there's a lot more you can do. And, of course, with the updates for OS X Mavericks, you can now share your, your works from your iPad to your uh, Mac and back and go from there. And lots of cool stuff. We're going to start today in GarageBand. Uh, lots of cool stuff here. It's very familiar, so it's not like changing the game by any means. But they do they did move things around, and they did add a couple things here. So we're going to take this song, which is uh, my song called Going South by Southwest. Um, I created two guitars, a uh, upright bass, and drums to get that Tex-Mex type deal for the song. Uh, as you can see, it looks pretty simple, straightforward, just like the old version of GarageBand. You've got your play buttons, you've got your instruments, you can uh, add instruments down on the plus button down on the bottom there, and then of course you can do all your settings, your loops, and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to actually, we'll add an instrument really quick so we can get to the instrument area. As you can see, you've got your smart drums, your smart strings, guitar, bass, uh, keyboards, and now a new area. This is called Inner App Audio Apps, and what this is, is if you've got another app that does uh, similar music stuff, like for instance I have an app called Amplitude for iPad, I can actually connect up to there and use that item to inside of GarageBand. So I can click on here, and I can bring that up. And of course that just feedback, did a feedback, so I turned this on off. So I can bring that into the mix here, uh, if I want to, I can go back and I can then uh, I can go over to instruments. If I have an instrument, like maybe a, an app for a keyboard or another instrument, I can bring that in there as long as it's compatible with GarageBand and then go from there. So this is perfect for third-party apps to start working with GarageBand to get their stuff into GarageBand as, of course, a third-party app. And then you can create new stuff. You can get uh, new keyboards. You can get new instruments in here. This can be a very flexible and a very useful area for GarageBand. So other than that, we've got this is pretty much all the same. You can play on your iPad. You can start a jam session. You can create a song anywhere. The cool thing about this is now you can go back to your My Songs and you can edit it. You can turn on your AirPlay. Here's how it works. Turn on your AirPlay on your iPad. Once you have that turned on, you go into the edit mode by holding down one of your songs and, until they start to shake. And then, of course, you'll see that little box on the top uh, left-hand corner. You can then choose AirDrop. I don't have it set up on the Mac. So then uh, you would then see the Mac at that point, and then you could say AirDrop it to that Mac. Your file with all the instruments and everything will then pour it over to your Mac so you can use GarageBand on your Mac to finish the song. So you can start an idea on the iPad, push it over to Mac, and, and finish it. Of course, you can also finish it up, send it an email, send it to Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, or set it up as a ringtone for your iPhone and then airdrop it to your iPhone as well. You can, there's also the uploading the song to iCloud. So you can choose that, and that, that takes the song to iCloud, and then you can bring it down from your, onto your Mac or another device that, of course, has iCloud attached. I just, I just put it up in my iCloud. As you can see, on the corner, there's a little cloud icon next to South by Southwest. So now you can, uh, you can you bring it and close that up. You'll see that it's coming from iCloud. 
so you can uh, actually take it off your iPad, have a backup copy up on iCloud, and that's pretty cool as well. And that is the GarageBand app. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same thing. You create, you can move things around. It's all MIDI-based, except when you're actually recording vocals, and you can put those, those parts in as well and go from there. Now, when you put it over to the OS X Mavericks version, you can add things like the virtual drummer and all the extras that that version of GarageBand has, and it's got a lot of great updates. And you can check it out over at the Apple Store to find out what type of updates you can get for that. This is GarageBand for the iPad. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk a little bit about iMovie because there's some major changes in iMovie. They've, they've really done this, uh, redone this over. Of course, once again, there's iMovie for Mavericks and iMovie for iOS 7. And it's really going to use that 64-bit architecture so you can create some great trailers, some great movies. It's really simple to use. And once again, you can airdrop it over to your Mac and finish it. You can put it up on iCloud. All you have to do, once again, like, uh, like we did before, is you hit the... Uh, uh, you go to your projects, select on here, and then hit the up button right there. I can choose to go to Air, AirDrop, or you can send it to iMovie Theater, which is Apple's newest thing to send it to uh, an iPad, another Mac, or your Apple TV, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, or CNN report, I report message or email if you want to. If, whatever you're sending, you'll be able to get it to where you need it to, to go. Now we're gonna open it up in the editing thing. I, I've already created a quick video here. Editing simple, straightforward, just like it was before with the, uh, with the previous version of iMovie. You've got transitions, you can make a trailer, you can make a video. Let's go back here, let's go to a new movie. We'll go to the theater area. We'll hit the plus button. We can say movie or trailer. We'll choose trailer because there's actually some new trailers in here, including I believe this family one is brand new. So we'll press on that. And of course, you'll get to see the intro and all the other good stuff and uh, and get an idea of how the trailer would actually go. Uh, so you can actually create, you create this, of course, replacing the videos and the pictures with your stuff and make some cool stuff for your family. If you want to make a movie instead of a trailer, all you have to do is uh, tap on there and once again you'll have some themes that you can choose from including this one this is uh, this looks like a brand new one with neon or if you don't want any uh, transitions you just say simple and go from there and once again this took me this this uh, project right here took me only a couple minutes to put together and of course I have a video that I can show and let me show it to you right now hello I'm just sitting here creating a movie it's a movie unlike any other movie for you to watch. It'll have lots of stuff in it and multiple camera shots. So are you ready to be part of this movie? And of course you can go from there and uh, have some fun with it. Bring in your pictures, bring in your video, bring in your own audio, create something on GarageBand bring it in and uh, and put it into your movie timeline. And when you need to move it over, use AirDrop to move it over to your OS X Mavericks and you can finish on iMovie there. And that's pretty cool. All right, let's talk for a minute about iPad Air. Of course, we got the brand new iPads, the new iPad mini, which has the retina display, which a lot of people are really happy about. And then of course, the new iPad, the fifth generation iPad called iPad Air. The iPad Air is gonna have the A7 chip, the same chip that's in the iPhone 5S, and also the M7 chip, which is that coprocessor chip. Now, if you're not sure what the M7 chip does, it basically takes a lot of the, uh, the processes that you use on a regular basis. Like for instance, the gyroscope, that'll actually be over on the M7 processor. So when things start to call to the iPad, it doesn't have to fully turn itself on to collect data and get results. And of course, that saves a lot of power by doing that. So with this processor coprocessor sitting inside the iPad, you'll be able to do a lot of other things, things like healthcare, care uh, uh, third-party programs and, and utilities will be able to attach to it so they can uh, they don't have to have wires going to computers and, and they can monitor things right then and there through Bluetooth connections 
and that's the coolest thing about that. And of course, the iPad doesn't need to be on to update anything. And when it's time to play a game, it'll play a lot faster. In fact, they're saying that the iPad, this the iPad Air, will be twice as fast as the fourth generation iPad, and ultimately 72 times faster than the original iPad when it comes to graphics and process. It's also going to update to the 64-bit technology. I've been debating whether I go from the iPad 4th generation to the iPad Air. And in all reality, because I'm doing this show, I will probably make the upgrade. Prices start at $499 for the iPad Air. Uh, you're going to be able to get them or pre-order them uh, on November 1st. And then you can get your iPad. As for the iPad Mini, the Retina display, it will have the A7 chip. No M7 chip either. The only thing I didn't like about the iPad Air and the iPad Mini, they have the exact same camera. They don't have that special sensor on the back side that can tell if it's too bright or too dark to change the uh, flash for you. They don't have the fact that you can do a slow motion video. And I would have loved to have seen that on the iPad Air, but it wasn't there, it's the same camera. And that's kind of disappointing because I would have started doing movies. There's a lot of cool stuff out there, including the Padcaster, where I can turn my iPad into a camera itself. And a 5 megapixel camera is pretty good, but an 8 megapixel camera that does slow motion, I would have, I would have started using that on my iPad the second I got it. All right, and that does it for this episode of iPad 365. What would you think of GarageBand? What would you think of iMovie? We'll take a look at Keynote, and we'll take a look at some of the other programs in the iLife series and show you what programs you want to get for your iPad. And, of course, if you have a Mac and you haven't downloaded Mavericks yet, you should start thinking about it. The two cool things about my MacBook Pro is it runs cooler, it runs quieter, because the fans don't turn on because it's running cooler, and it also doesn't uh, take up a lot of process. I had programs open up, you know, if I closed the lid and then reopened the lid, they would just completely eat up all the process and my battery life would be nothing. This one actually does a lot better in memory management, does a lot better in battery management, and you'll have a better time with your Mac. And especially if you have an older Mac, from 2007 and beyond, you can actually put Mavericks onto that machine. That's pretty cool, and it's absolutely free for the upgrade, so go for it and tell me what you think. Let me know, of course, iPad365 is the Twitter handle. Show at iPad-365.com is the email address if you've got an app that you want to show off, and we'll go from there. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching. We will see you next time, and until then, you guys geek out.